Kaikoura High School reopens today after the region's devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake. Plus, the government has announced, in fact, they were going through Parliament yesterday, new emergency laws to get the town back on its feet. So does this mean it's life back to normal? What else is needed? Is it going to work? Joining me is a local MP, Kaikoura MP Stuart Smith. Good morning, Stuart. Good morning. All right. I mean, we don't expect everything to be ready straight away, but what's um, how do you see it? How far away is Kaikoura from really getting back on its feet? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. I mean, th this was a, an important step yesterday to get the uh, legislative framework in place for uh, the recovery to really kick in. But uh, really, until the roads open, uh, life won't be exactly as it was, uh, you know, pre the earthquake, and that's going to take some time. So the laws that have, I mean, the, the changes that have gone through Parliament mean we're not going to have to sort of dick around for months with the Resource Management Act. We can, if we have to clear that rubble on the road or the rocks, we can push them into the sea, we can dredge the harbour, we can get on and get stuff done. Is that basically what it's going to achieve? Yes, it is. It's not, it's not a callous disregard for the environment by any means. It's just really truncating the process so that we don't end up being tied up in red tape and, and in six months not had a wheel turn. Uh, we can't afford to wait that long, and the people of Kaikoura uh, wouldn't put up with that, and, and quite rightly so. Uh, but the process must be there for a reason, otherwise you think, well, why do we put up with it at any other time? What do you, how is that going to balance out? I mean, as you say, you recognise this, you know, we can't just be going holeless bowlers or disregard some things. How do you achieve that balance, Stuart? Well, I think that's, uh, it's an extraordinary event. Um, and when you have extraordinary events, you need extraordinary measures to deal with it. Uh, there's a lot of focus on this, and there's a lot of work going into it. Uh, the work, the, and we have to actually uh, remember that the earthquake didn't apply for a resource consent, uh, and there's a lot of uh, rubble went into the sea anyway. This is a natural process. Uh, there won't be necessarily just holeless bowlers. Um, bulldozing rubble into the sea, uh, but it will enable uh, the rubble to be uh, taken away and, and nearby reclaiming some land, not necessarily into the sea itself, but onto rocks uh, beside the road. Um, you know, but all of those details are being worked through as we speak. But we've got to have the ability to get this thing moving. And so I'm, I'm absolutely for it. i tell you something that someone asked me yesterday was, what's the problem with pushing it into the sea in any case? Is it, is it the seabed? Is it the, is it the, the life on the sea floor? What, what is the actual problem with pushing stuff into the sea? We do that when we oh, reclaim then... land. Absolutely we do, but um, in this particular case, uh, the intertidal zone is where all the power and the crayfish, all the, the life cycle is really uh, an important part of that life cycle, and, and so if we would uh, just to do that without thinking about it, um, then we could actually do a whole lot of harm to that already um, impacted uh, life life cycle that's been well, it's been quite badly disrupted because of the earthquake with the uplift and we so we've got to be careful with what we do and and that and of course we will be but um, we've got to also make sure things move along i know you're heading down to your patch or part of your patch you've got one of the biggest electorates in the country i know you're heading you're heading down there today you said the road i mean how would you set the priorities for the people of kaikura get the road open first then the harbour uh, well, I think those things can go on t uh, contemporaneously. Um, I think the so southern part of the road is w well away, uh, or getting closer to being open. So the, uh, we were sort of thinking pre-Christmas, I hear down a, one of the downer construction people saying that they expected uh, it in a couple of weeks. Well, I hope they, they are successful with that, but I'm not sure what timeline it will be. I'd have to take my hat off to downer, by the way. They've, they have really pulled out all stops and they're to be congratulated. I think they've made f fantastic progress both on the uh, st south road south of Kaikoura on Highway 1 but also on the inland road. Uh, look, Stuart, I know you've got a background in grape growing and you used to run uh, you know, a lot of the, the, the national bodies. We're hearing reports uh, certainly last night that the impact on wine growers in the region, in the Marlborough region, was a lot more severe than what we first thought. Yes, there's a lot of tank damage um, in Marlborough and, and some, a loss of, of wine, but it's only, it, it sounds like a lot, um, in like 5 million litres of wine, but it's only 2% of the production. Uh, but 20% of the uh, tank capacity has been damaged in some way, either damaged or, or um, 
needs complete replacement or, or, or a repair. But really, that, um, that there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So I've been involved with that, um, with those early planning discussions, and it's really about mobilising the capacity to repair and replace tanks as much as possible. But there's also other challenges like getting the, the tanks into Marlborough uh, because of the challenges with the roads, etc. But look, we're working through all of those things. Another, another issue has been logistics and getting wine out of Marlborough quickly enough. Because of the longer route now on State Highway 1, uh, there's a lack of trucks and drivers. But I, I actually believe this is the moment in time that coastal shipping has been waiting for. There needed to be some disruption uh, for it to uh, enable coastal shipping to really step up and show what it can do. We've had that disruption now with the road. Coastal um, freight can get from Auckland to Christchurch uh, by sea at about the same time uh, it takes to go by rail. So we have an opportunity now to really see coastal shipping step up. And I had a meeting yesterday with the um, coastal shippers and, uh, and put that um, to them, that they, they really need to step up and deliver, because I hope they make it. This is absolutely a great opportunity for New Zealand. Hey, Stuart Smith, appreciate your time. I know you're heading down there today anyway, so wish everyone. We're still thinking of Kaikoura. We're not going to forget them. So Stuart Smith, he is the local MP. Tributes are pouring in for Kiwi music legend Ray Columbus, who has died at the age of 74. The rocker is best...